Today was a big moment for Prime Minister Liz Truss. After a honeymoon from hell with the economy smouldering around her, a chance to possibly reclaim the faith of the nation in her big conference speech. Well, moving on up is a bizarre choice for a soundtrack, isn't it? Because they certainly are moving up. Inflation, energy prices, mortgage rates, debt, not to mention Keir Starmer's poll ratings. Also, the people that originally sang that song all vote Labour. The writer has been particularly rude about the Tories. And it contains lyrics about packing your bags, baby, and going. Well, Truss's advisers briefed in advance that she'd arrive on stage to a 90s classic. End of the road would have been my choice. And by the end of it, maybe don't speak. The slogan plastered behind her says, getting Britain moving. Well, it's certainly moving, but into a recession. But to be fair to Liz Truss, she was very clear about how she's going to fix the unholy mess she has created in probably the worst first month of any PM in history. I have three priorities for our economy. Growth. Growth. <laughs> and growth. Groan, groan, and groan. Utterly meaningless blather, but also rather familiar meaningless blather. We need three things. Growth, growth, growth. I mean, you know you're in trouble when you're plundering Keir Starmer speeches for dynamic inspiration. And for those of us who were hoping for some detail, well, this is about as much as we got. And for too long, the political debate has been dominated by the argument about how we distribute a limited economic pie. Instead, we need to grow the pie so that everyone gets a bigger slice. I love a big pie, Miss Truss, but pies don't grow. They're just the same size that they start as. She did at least appear to have made friends with her Chancellor, who crawled out from under the large bus that she's been throwing him under all week. And that's why our dynamic new Chancellor and I will be taking action in three areas. First of all, we will lower... Hey, we tanked the economy! Whoopee! Whoop! Boom! Really? What's so funny? What's the joke? You sent people's mortgages rocketing. The Bank of England had to bail out £65 billion to save the pension schemes. The pound tanked to a record low against the dollar. What is so funny? Why are any of you people laughing? What is dynamic about what Kwasi Kwarteng has done other than it's the single most dynamic, terrible start to any chancellorship ever? It says an awful lot that the biggest cheer of the day came at this moment. <laughs> That's right, it was for the security guards kicking out the protesters from Greenpeace, or as Liz Truss calls them, the anti-growth coalition. Because anyone who disagrees with her is anti-growth, even though everything she's done so far has led to the opposite of growth. The sad truth is that nothing has been more anti-growth than Liz Truss's premiership. Today, she basically told us to strap in and get ready for more of the same kind of chaos. She said we'll grow the economy, but doesn't tell us how we're going to grow it or how she's going to pay for it. She said she'll cut the national debt, but also that we'll borrow and spend more. None of this makes any sense. We all want and need the government to turn this around. We'd all love to have gigantic tax cuts. But that's not how these things work in a cost-of-living crisis of this magnitude. And sadly, right now, it looks like the best way to get Britain moving is to get Miss Truss moving out of number 10. Well, joining me now is Talk TV presenter Richard Tice, law and commentator uh, Paula Roan adrian and former Conservative MP Louise Mensch. Well, Louise Mensch, let me start with you over... I think you're in New York. Um, you're very good at defending the indefensible about Boris Johnson. Have you now shifted gears to defend the indefensible about Liz Truss? Well, Piers, don't you think it's about time you said, come back, Boris, all is forgiven? Well, you know what? Uh, I, I tell you what, on that point, there is a poll out which basically says that very thing, that actually most Tories are getting buyer's remorse and wish they could bring back Boris. That is how bad things are, where he is a better it's not alternative. That surprising. 
It's not that surprising because the first thing that Kwesi Kwarteng did before he announced all these ridiculous plans was he got rid of the civil servants at the Treasury who know what they're doing, who've got institutional knowledge and who have been there a while. And I'm afraid to say that bespeaks a lot of arrogance. And the most worrying thing that Liz said in her speech today, which otherwise was OK, it was a steady the ship speech, was the Chancellor and I are in lockstep. Well, when she finished, the pound fell a little bit more against the dollar. And if she is to turn this around, I don't know if she can, but if she is to turn this around, the first thing she has to do is she has to sack the chancellor. I know that she's very good friends with Kwesi Kwarteng. I know him, I like him myself. But although loyalty to your friends is admirable in most circumstances, it isn't admirable when you're the prime minister. Then you have to be loyal to the country first. He is obviously a disaster. He has to be fired. He has to go. And she has to appoint a competent Well, I would agree with that. I, mean, a bit, I don't agree with what back. you just said. I, I don't disagree with you about the chancellor. I think he's completely discredited now. Um, yep. But I, this idea of her steadying the ship, it looked more like she was at the wheel of the Titanic and... This is still careering into a gigantic iceberg of their own making. They built the iceberg and they're now driving the ship into it. And I'm not well, sure there's much they can do now to restore confidence back into the economy and the markets, which will save them from the inevitable holing. And by holing, I mean a gigantic shellacking at the hands of the Labour Party of the next election, because the polls are getting scary for all Conservative MPs. Absolutely agree with you. And one thing the Conservatives have been good at is ripping off the plaster when they have to. And I think in this case, they have to. Liz is going to have to do more than just get rid of the abolition of the 45p rate. That was OK, but it doesn't go nearly far enough. She needs to really listen. She said she listened. She needs to really listen and recognise that the market's thoroughly rejected this idea of cutting taxes and then at the same time cutting benefits, she can either take decisive action or, I think, I hope, I believe, the Conservative MPs will take decisive action against her. And if neither of those two things happen, then the voters are going to take decisive action yeah, I against the Conservative I completely agree. Party. Let me bring in um, Richard Tice. Richard, are you going to try and pretend you thought that was a good speech? Uh, I think of her a terrible week. Um, it was entirely it, in keeping. It was well. It was about the best that she could do. Look, the reality is they have had a disastrous start uh, from the end of the period of national mourning, and but but we have to. Which, remember... by the way, they have to stop using yeah, yeah, no, sure. as <laughs> some pathetic excuse. Yeah, quasi quasi saying. As, as repeatedly said, but James Cleverly was at it again this morning, they've, that somehow the Queen dying is responsible but, for their cataclysmic any budget. There's a key point. Bear, bearing in mind, he was laughing during the Yeah, Queen's that was funeral. weird as well. It was weird. Look, but the point is, just to correct you about the pension thing, they've actually spent only three billion. They've got a facility for 65, right. which they're not using. The bond markets are settling. But it is catastrophic because interest rates have gone up. The real reason the markets took fright was because of the government's massive bailout of the energy freeze using debt as opposed to the scheme that I put forward, which was to put the cost onto the producers. That's why the, bo the bond markets and all the markets took fright. Well, we know, you have you know, further... We've got the farcical situation where the boss of Shell, the CEO, has mm. asked the government yeah. to tax energy firms to help the poorest people deal with soaring bills. So no, doubt, no doubt he's... They're almost the... begging her to win full tax. Well, and the wording he used was there needs to be an intervention. I proposed in mid-August a proper full-scale intervention that didn't involve government debt. Mm. The government ignored my plan, and frankly, they deserve everything that gets thrown at them. But what is it, you know, my problem, Paul, about this yeah. is the optics are so bizarre. You, know, you come in, you take over in a, an appalling cost-of-living crisis, and it seems like the, your priorities are to cut taxes for the wealthiest people in society, yes. to spare the energy companies making all this profit any windfall tax to remove any cap on bankers' bonuses. And you're like, what are you doing? Why, why are these people your priorities? And what about the people at the other end who are now, course. if they've got a mortgage, now facing horrendous bills, which will far outweigh any saving they make on the energy? And it's not even at the other end. What we're talking about is the masses here. We're talking about 
most of the people, the ordinary people of this world, who will get up and go to the polling station and right. vote, who are going to risk losing their homes, who cannot afford to, to heat their homes, who cannot afford to feed their children, who cannot afford just the basics. Um, and this anti-growth coalition, uh, I make up part of that anti-growth coalition, the Bank of England makes up part of the anti-growth no, no, coalition. No, no, no. What, Van, the Bank of Van Bruen Pont. and Shell, they make, make up part of well, the, the Bank of England. Well, the Bank of England... England. Here's the problem, here's the problem with this. The Bank of England might be incompetent, as you say, but they've had to bail her out. So how can she now turn around and use but, them as some stick of incompetency, given her own incompetence? They're all incompetent, right. is the reality. I mean, the Bank of England, first That's of all... That's scary, Richard. It, you know, it is, look, because the Bank of England should have raised rates earlier, but the Bank of England, on Monday morning, at 8 o'clock, should have been buying in the bond markets. They wait until Wednesday, for heaven's sake. That shows the height of their incompetence. They allowed this to drag on. Look, they're all, they're all clueless. I don't buy the bit that actually Tom Scholar was going to save the world. He wasn't. Frankly, he's old-school orthodoxy, good riddance. You need to bring in some smart people. They had some smart people, but it's all and very, they didn't bring them in. But it's all very well playing casino politics. No, it's not very do. well. It's terrible. No, no, but what I mean is it's all very well if it lands on, on the colour you bet the bank on, right? They seem to put everything on red and it's yes. come up black. And the problem with that is it destroys confidence in, in this administration. And at the top of it, you've got Liz Charles. I watched her today for body language. and I'm a, I'm a student of body language, right? I just saw a, a rabbit in headlines. I saw somebody who has lost her confidence. She wasn't even as confident today as she was in August when she was taking on Rishi Sunak oh. and actually sounding quite confident. Well, because she hasn't practised. Right. Now she's realised the, the reality of, of what is going on and I think she's in, in, incredibly vulnerable, having made the classic mistake that Boris made, actually, of getting rid of everyone from the Cabinet who's not a yes person to her who doesn't agree with her, out you all go, rather than keeping in a lot of disparate voices who might challenge her, might make better policy. She's done the same thing as Boris, so they're all outside yeah, look, the tent the and they're all attacking her, and I think that's going to be what brings her down. What's happened to her over the last month or so is that she's had a reality check. She's out of her depth. Well, we've had a reality check. But, but also, Paula, she, they've made some horrific mistakes yeah. that have demonstrated their incompetence and that has basically lost the confidence of the markets, business leaders, and frankly, the population at large, yeah. which, is a, which is a disastrous thing. And, and the most uh, tragedy of all of this is that people's mortgages are going through right. the roof. Uh, now, Louise Mensch, is, is she still with us? Yeah, yes, Louise. I am, so, absolutely. You know, um, I, I, I advocated when it came down to Rishi Sunak against Liz Truss. If I backed Sunak from way before, uh, I felt for a year he should have been running the country because we need someone who understands the economy and economics. Everything that uh, he... Pred I well, wait a second. Everything he predicted about what would happen if Liz Truss went through with her plans that she was espousing in the leadership race, everything has come true. He literally articulated exactly what has now happened. I would rather have the guy who predicts all this than the one who never saw it coming. So why can't the Tories say, you know what, we just made a mistake, we're not going to go through another torturous leadership process, we're actually just going to have the other guy? I think it was a very bitter leadership contest, to be frank with you, and um, I doubt that he could unite the parliamentary party. Personally, I supported Penny Mordaunt, who's come out today and said there is no way that we're going to be cutting benefits at a time of soaring inflation. And that's who I think they should go with as a compromise candidate. But I do just want to come back to the issue of inflation. Liz Truss sells herself and tries to did today as a daughter of Thatcher, as a Thatcherite. Well, I'm a Thatcherite too. And the one thing that Thatcher did first when she got into power was she tackled inflation. Liz is, in fact, doing exactly the opposite yeah. to Thatcher's plan. She's risking inflation. Thatcher didn't go for growth and tax cuts, which she absolutely did, until she got inflation under control. That was her number one priority, and that should be Liz And Truss's she also... Priority. I've been saying this... Yeah, I, I agree. I've been saying this for a while. This is not what Thatcher would have done in this position. She stabilised nope. the economy, got inflation under control, and then when it was all going quite well, then she slashed income tax and is then, has then right become here. known as the great tax slasher. In fact, she stabilised right. the economy first. She also put windfall taxes on energy companies, Richard. That's yes. it. Yes. And if I could say one more, if I could yeah, just say one more, one more thing, more thing yeah. on that, one more thing on that, on that point. You said about the cabinet that she's got a, a bunch of yes men. I think it's a lot worse than that because she admitted today, before conference or yesterday, that she and Quasi had come up with this 
frankly nutty uh, miniature budget on their own yeah. without even consulting the cabinet. You can't blame the cabinet when the cabinet didn't know. And that's why people like Penny are speaking up now. So she's got a very short Although time. Although I would say, I, don't look, know if she can. I, I would say what Penny Morton has done, by the way, is extremely disloyal to the concept of collective responsibility. The cabinet is supposed to subscribe to collective responsibility, not going out and if, saying what you would do. Let's Richard, make it very clear, though. Told about oh, it, hang on, hang on. Louise told is completely about wrong about Penny Morden. Penny Morden has the least understanding of mathematics and economics, frankly, of any of the leadership candidates. So that would have been catastrophic as well. But they made a, a terrible mistake. They're not going to get rid of Quasi. They're, you know, they're, they're very, very good friends. Uh, you know, from the, from the country's point of view, I hope they've got to, frankly, learn their lesson and, uh, and, and try and restore some confidence. But it's, look, they're finished at the next election and, frankly, good riddance. Do you know, there's a new phrase, uh, Paula, which has now entered the Oxford Dictionary as of today. Squeaky bum time, which was the famous <laughs> line used by Alex Ferguson um, when he was talking about those... Yeah, exactly, that sound. <laughs> That's actually the gallery doing that, not anybody at the desk, I might add. Uh, squeaky bum time, which is that moment towards the end of a football match when things are getting a little bit tense. I do feel that mistrust is heading into that territory where you feel like... I mean, I saw Grant Shapps, who said he gives her 10 days, basically, to turn this round. I mean, that's an incredible thing for a senior politician in the same party to say. I don't think she has any time to turn it around. The, the damage is done. She's, she's at an end. But in terms of the squeaky bum... Uh, analogy, mm. uh, I can imagine that she's going for rear of the year, if yeah. that still exists. Yeah. Because where else has she got to is go? She, can I, she I, come I, back I, from this, Richard? Or is she, uh, is she basically... No, I think... I think is her credibility so shot it's, that really it's just a matter of time? And, and the Tory... The Tory MPs will do what they always do, which is they'll make a ruthless well, calculation about their own future, and if it looks like they're all going to lose their jobs, out she goes. Well, that's quite an interesting one, because, in theory, they can't do that for a year. Uh, my, my hunch is unless that Unless they actually, change the rules. Uh, unless they change the rules. But in which case, she could just call... We'll an, call she, she could call an election. She's That's her double bluff that. with right. them. Yeah. But if they so call an election now, they would get absolutely we're, destroyed. Sure. Look, we're into, I mean, the, the red wall voting alone has moved gigantically oh yeah, away from the Conservatives. But, but for no real love for Labour, but for absolute disdain for how the Conservatives have failed over the last doesn't have to say another word. I mean, the one Correct. thing I was struck by... I was speaking to my mother earlier about... Um, uh, Lisa Nandy, who on, on Question Time tomorrow night, um, with Lisa Nandy and uh, Nadim Zahawi and a few others, Brian Cox. So it should be a lively evening, but she's been quite impressed by Lisa Nandy and indeed some of the other Labour front benches who had a very competent week of their conference. Right, so you've got a situation where it's the Tories, the incumbent yep. government, who look completely incompetent and chaotic. <laughs> and the opposition are basically just doing politics by numbers. They've got some pretty smart people on the front bench now just doing their jobs and doing them quite solidly. And I think Middle England, which is the kind of yep. place the my mother represents, I think they're beginning to think, you know what, they're not too bad this lot compared to this it's, chaos. It's, it's like the last two years of John Major and it'll be just a great gradual drip, 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 yeah. and the various Tory MPs, they're now starting to look for their future jobs. Yep. Their non-exec directorships, you know, where they yeah, can yeah. go in the All future. All of it. And we've, you know, we've, we, I think we're just, you know... And it, it's... But actually, you come back to the very first point, trustonomics. Look, the growth thing is right. I've been banging on about it for 18 months. You can't tax your way out of a crisis, you grow your way out of a crisis. That's the first point. Have you ever but, tried to grow vegetables without water? Uh, no, you've, but the way you water it is... The thing is, in a, a business, you borrow to invest to grow. Right. And cakes do grow, actually. Not that I bake many myself, but cakes do grow. And so, you know, you've got to grow the size of the cake and then actually... No, no, once, the cake, the once the cake has been made... It's a pie, by the way, not a cake. No, it's a cake. She originally started talking about a cake. Then she moved to pie. Then she moved... I don't know why. Maybe it's a bit more right, stodgy. <laughs> even whether it's a pie or cake, once they've been baked, that's yes. it. They don't then grow again. No, right? that, that's right. But, you know, she, her argument is that uh, you've got to grow the cake and then, uh, essentially, remind, everybody, everybody, gets, remind, everybody gets a bit her bigger. Her cakes remind me of a very soft souffle <laughs> that, unfortunately, <laughs> one little prod no. and the whole thing collapses. 